Hello, I'm Janet and I'm part of the Hampshire Eating Disorders Service. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk to you um, parents and carers in terms of some of the coping strategies and more practical tips and hints that uh, you might find useful when you're caring for your young person with an eating disorder. Eating disorders can force families to be in a real state of high distress. Um, and a lot of the time, it's about you managing that distress. Um, and it's recognising what it is. If we think about distress as like a wave or any high emotional state, that wave builds, but it also then crashes and subsides. So one of the things might be that helps you is when you think of some of the behaviors that you might be experiencing at home, is that these are waves of emotion. The one thing that's constant is that change will happen. So rather than you sort of being pulled along by that wave of emotion, maybe just observe it for what it is. Again, that sounds easier said than done. But again, if it's something that might help, uh, I'd encourage you to, to use it. As a family, it may be that um, there's huge impact financially because one of you may well be at home caring instead of working. Or it may be that you are looking for support else outside of the family to help. It's interesting that often families will say that people that they thought they could rely on, unfortunately, just didn't understand or weren't particularly helpful. And I do know numbers of families who've said, oh, grandparents. All that they'll say is send her or him round to me and what they need is a good roast and that'll sort things out. Now, this comes from, you know, a lovely intent, but it's not actually something that's going to necessarily help. So I think it's really important uh, for you as a family to have a, to try and develop a support network. Now, that may well be within the family itself. It may well be external to the family. But again, you know, I would just say try and get as much help as you can, even if it's with if there's a younger sibling or other siblings in the household. Make sure that they have lifts, make sure that they can actually do and carry on with their life as much as possible you know, they will be impacted, but get as much as information as possible. And if there are siblings groups offered to you, then please, you know, I would advise you to, to, to take those on so that your um, poorly child's brothers and sisters get some information about what's going on and support for themselves. So sometimes it's in what you're trying to do to care for your child can actually be accommodating. And again, it happens really easily. Families may all say, oh, we can't eat at the same table with our child anymore because she or he wants to eat separately at the breakfast bar or in a separate um, room. Again, this is what the eating disorder is trying to isolate your young person from the family. So, you know, that is something that you could, could be seen as accommodating the eating disorder. In our desire to get our children to eat, you know, we do do things like drive 10 miles across town at 10 o'clock at night just to try and find a particular brand of crumpet because that was the thing, that, the last thing that they ate. And you think, if I get that. But again, it's just to think about sometimes this is just playing into... Um, the eating disorder itself, because that's something that it's demanding rather than you know that your child in the past has eaten any brand of crumpet. And this is the eating disorder talking, not your child. So it's really 
important as well as a parent and carer not to con- to, to model perfectionist behaviour. And so what I mean by that is good enough caring is good enough. It's the 80%, not the 100%. You're not, you you are going to say things that upset. You are going to say things that um, aren't necessarily helpful all the time. But you know what? You're human. So it's going to happen and that's fair enough. But again, think about in if you've ever been in, a, in an aircraft and they go through the safety briefing, one of the, the first things that they will say is that if the uh, oxygen masks come down from the ceiling, you as a parent need to put your face mask on first before helping someone else. And so this is the same thing here with an eating disorder. You need to be looking after yourself in order to be able to look after your poorly child. So if friends say, is there anything I can do to help? Okay, they might not be able to come and do meal support, but they could do your ironing for you. They could wrap your Christmas presents. They could um, rake the leaves in the garden. Anything that helps you carry on with life so that you can actually support your child. So, and again, if there are two adults in the household, if you can play a tag team so that one one person does a meal, the other person doesn't do the next meal and can have a break. That's really, really important because it's about replenishing your batteries so that you can carry on long term. And stress is such a huge impact on the on the body physically and mentally. You will be incredibly stressed. You are high levels of anxiety and distress. But please try and do whatever you can to minimize that stress in some way, shape or form. A few tips and hints for mealtimes. If at all possible, don't have your young person in the kitchen with you. Create meal plans. These may well have been discussed with the clinicians in your appointments. Do put a meal plan together if you can, if that works for you, maybe for four days uh, hence. Um, Try and keep as calm and minimize your anxiety with breathing exercises uh, before you go and do the meal preparation. During the meal, I've talked about use it, the use of distraction, the TV. Um, other siblings can be great uh, if they're talking about their day. Again, it's a way of distracting from what your poor young person is going through, that bush trucker trial when he faces um, a, a plate of food. Um, After the meal, um, try and encourage your child to stay downstairs with you as much as possible. Again, it may well be that uh, you can play cards. A series of Netflix are really useful in these um, instances, box sets. Um, It's just an opportunity, especially uh, to to build some of that family time back in. Also to take the pressure off of um, or helping the there may well be feelings of guilt that your young person has if they've actually completed a meal and so the bully inside them will be um having the, having a go at them but if they're if they're being distracted they may well not hear that bully's voice so loud you may well be seeing other unhealthy activities especially things like exercise um and one of the key things here is really to try and reduce that exercise level and try and get it down to a very manageable level. If you think of the amount of effort that your child is putting in to actually getting the nutrition and energy into their body, only to see them do 200 star jumps two hours later, it's a it's about trying to encourage them to reduce uh, that level of activity and and to sort of promote normal physical activity. So going for a walk rather than doing star jumps. Um, secretive exercise. You know, often you hear of families um, 
realise that maybe their young person has been up at two o'clock in the morning, um, secretly exercising, doing sit-ups. Um, things like solitary exercise, not necessarily great because that really sort of, it, there aren't any la- limits and boundaries. Um, so anything within a team is really good with a coach because then that can be managed. Um, it's also quite useful to use um, physical activity as a motivator. So again, as a parent or carer, um, sometimes we could talk about, we could go about things possibly in a less helpful way by saying, you won't be able to go for a walk because you haven't finished that meal. Whereas if we turn it round and you t- use it as a motivator and say, when you finish that meal, we can go for a walk. That has a slightly different impact. So that's one other thing sort of to try and think about when you're trying to manage unhealthy or excessive um, exercise. The other area uh, to think about is um, sometimes um, with eating disorders and even within cases of anorexia, Uh, young people can um, purge so they can go make themselves sick. Um, I was told by somebody that it takes about six flushes of the toilet to get rid of an oily film that is left there after someone's been sick. So it may well be that you don't necessarily hear the shower uh, on after a meal or the toilet being flushed but it may well be that there are the signs that you can actually um, look out for. There have even been cases where um, families have reported that their child has been sick into a plastic bag and then left it in their room. Um, the, when things like that happen, it's it's they want you to know that they are making themselves sick. Please don't get angry, but just acknowledge what you have found and then ask how best you can help them. So... Binging is something that uh, may occur. And again, this may well be an opportunity to maybe just sort of limit the amount of food that is available or to put a box with your young person's name on in the fridge with a number of snacks and say that they those are the snacks that you have for today. And when they're gone, they're gone. They aren't going to be replenished. Um, Emotions, that's um, something else to really consider how to sort of manage Um, being that emotional coach. And it is okay for everybody to have emotions. So as a family, sort of practicing that is is really important. Um, And so encouraging that communication of where those feelings have come from. Um, Developing strategies that include you know relaxation um, are really important positive family um, time is really good and having goals um, not necessarily long-term goals but even goals that might be as simple as let's think about when we can go to the eat beach and have an ice cream so these are things that you can use to actually help where the mood is very low there may well be anger Uh, as I say these are these emotions are like waves they come they build up but they then dissipate and it's about you as a parent carer managing your distress in that particular situation so trying to stay cool calm understanding being alongside your child rather than feeling that you are fighting them is really, really important. Recognise obsessional behaviour because this might be something that comes in, whether it be um, routines or excessive hand washing. Again, just recognise them, validate that you've seen, you've noticed them and then try and encourage some more flexibility. Small, small steps are what we're talking about here because this is something that's going to take a long time to manage and it's not going to be done within a 24-hour period. Celebrate uh, the successes, however small, and 
focus on that non-eating disordered behavior that you see when you've got your son or daughter there rather than the bully in the room. And just accept that this is a fight that your son or daughter has. You can't make them better, but you can support them throughout their treatment with the number of strategies that uh, have been suggested um, today. So please do talk to your clinician about anything that um, you've heard and you'd like more information on. Thank you.